Welcome back to video tutorials. Day 7, exercise 1. Okay, today um, is day 7 of Excel. Spreadsheets 2013. Okay, um, exercise 1. We are going to be opening the Excel student files. Um, from there, we are going to open Unit B. Okay, once we open Unit B, we are going to open EXB1 file. We are going to save this copy using the save as command and rename this file to revenue by quarter. Okay, and then we are going to be using these functions. We are going to use the add sum function, the average function, maximum function, and minimum functions. We are also going to resize the columns to display our data. Okay, uh, let me kind of add one more item here. We, uh -huh. we will also. Um, I'm gonna create a complex, create a complex formula. Okay, so just now that we have that, okay, let's go ahead and move this out of the way. Okay, here's my student files. I'm gonna open that folder, I'm gonna resize that window. Here's my unit A. We're gonna, I'm sorry, okay, we're done with unit A. I'm gonna go back here. We are gonna start with unit B. And here is EXB1. We're gonna open this file. Okay, now that we have it open, we're gonna be using file, save as command. It's gonna be, it's gonna be saved under my. Excel documents. So okay, it's not this okay. There it is. It's play here. One click, and it's gonna go into this particular folder. Um, into working. Yeah. Okay. Now this exercise is this. One second. To revenue by quarter. Okay. Now that we have our copy saved, let's go ahead and start working with this. Okay, now let's see what we have. Okay, so here's all, all, all the data. Okay, this is a two revenue by quarter. Okay, for a particular company. FY2 in 10. Okay, now right here, if we want to change the 2010, I'm now going to click right here into the cell. We need to click into A1, bring your pointer up here into the formula bar, and type in 2010. And there it is. Okay, so this is the revenue of a company. It sounds like this is a multinational company. Okay, they have, um, it looks like they have offices in different countries. Okay, uh, this is very common. Okay, a lot of companies they divide the whole year into four quarters, so they go by three months, three months, three months, and three months. Okay, so it looks like we already have a total here. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and delete that total. Okay, left click, hold, and drag over to delete that total. I'm gonna click on save. There you go. Okay. So today we are going to be working with functions. Okay, we're going to see how quickly and accurate we could get all the totals for this particular company. Okay, we're going to get the totals by quarter, one, two, three, and four, and then we're going to get the total by country. Okay, now if we left click at the beginning and we drag it all the way to the right hand side, including the column F. Okay, and then I drag my uh, pointer down to cell F12, I'm going to have my range selected. Once I have my range selected, see, because right here they're asking for total by rows and totals by column. Once I have my selection, I'm going to be using the arrow zoom. And just one click into the arrow zoom. And there's all our totals. Okay. Just like that. Now we have all our totals. 
Okay. So we have the totals by okay by country per row and totals per column by quarter. Okay. So just using the arrow function. Okay. Let me go ahead and undo this. And again, okay, left click, hold, and drag over to F4, all the way down to F12. Why? Because right here they're asking for total. So any, anytime that I want to get a total by a column and by row, I just highlight my cells and I use the arrow functions and I click into the arrow cell, and there's my totals. Great. Great, great. Now, from here, remember, click on save. Once we click on save, now we are going to be working with, let's see what they are asking here. Okay. Excel, I mean, many times it's going to be used to, see, just to play, okay, different scenarios. For example, right here they could say, okay, we already have the totals, right? We know what's the total for quarter one. But what will be the result if we have an increase by 20%? Okay. Now, there's... Let's go ahead and see how much we will get, okay? If we have an extra one, 20%. So we're going to create a formula. Right here, we're not going to use a function. I'm just going to click into my equal sign, okay? And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and start my formula. Anytime that you guys want to get, okay, an increase by percentage, it's always, most of the time, it's going to be based into the total. So there is my total times... And then I'm going to be multiplying this by 20%. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and. We could just go ahead and type in 20%. Okay. And then we hit enter. Once we hit enter. This is the uh, the 20% increment to that total. Okay. Now. Right here. Down here. Let me go ahead and run a good example. Uh, I prefer to use this method because, I mean, we're going to be more familiar with whole numbers, right? Now, another way to get this is equals, we can select the B12, times 0 0.02. When I hit enter, see, I have exactly the same amount, okay? So, if we use the decimals, okay, uh, it's just going to be 0 0.02. That will be the 20%, okay? You guys are going to see that a lot, okay? Uh, right here, I'm just giving you an example, okay? So it's going to be it's gonna be a little more confusing if we use this method, 0 0.02, than, okay, than if we use, yes, you know, the total times 20%, like we, we have it right here into the cell. If we want to find out what's going to be the 30%, 40%, you know, just type in the number, 30, 40, 50, percent but make sure that you include the percentage okay so there you go I'm gonna go ahead and delete this other cell so there's the 20 percent okay now let's go ahead and get the other okay so again it's gonna be equals total times 20 percent enter okay now in this case, we, uh, okay, yeah, that's right. See, we can also apply the following. See, I'm going to click into G1, and I'm going to type in 20%. Enter. Okay. Now, this time we are going to be using a cell reference. And a lot of times it's better to use a cell reference, and the reason is the following. Look, we're going to type in equals. Here's the total. Now we're going to multiply this by, now it's going to be a cell reference. Here is going to be G1. Okay. On G1, we have the 20%. When we hit enter, there's our total. Okay, that's just the 20% increment. Okay, now we have the next one again equals total times 20%. Enter. Okay, now look the difference here. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and highlight the cells. Anytime um, in Excel, you guys are going to be using the borders a lot, okay, to separate your data or to make it more readable. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to select the cells that I want to use, that I want to apply to all borders. Okay? Now, you have to pay attention to this, okay? Um, if I come up here and I change this to 2D%, okay? 
because I use the red cell reference to that cell. When I hit enter, these two cells are going to change. These two are going to stay the same. Look. Enter. Now right here I have the total. By the 30%. Okay, the total increment will rise by 30% over this total. And these two are not going to change. Why? Because in this case we use, we just type in the 20% directly. So we have no cell reference. The only way that we could apply change this is going to be by tapping here 30%, and then I will have to do that into the other cell. Okay? So anytime that you guys are creating your table, it's, uh, uh, it's better, okay? If we just go ahead and use a cell reference. Why? Because we could change just this number, and right away we will see what will be the results. Okay? Now, once we have a formula, okay, I'm going to go ahead and edit this formula. I click into the B14. I'm going to go into the formula bar. It's always recommended that you guys make these changes on your, for, under your formula bar. Okay. Now, we have the B12. Now, I'm going to delete 20%. And I'm going to have a reference to this particular cell, G1, which is 30%. And I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to go ahead and edit the next one, same process, delete 20% and have a cell reference to the G1 and enter. Okay, now these three cells are, uh -huh, this is the increase by 20%. Okay, now I'm going to go back uh, back up here, type in 20% and look, now the four numbers are, are going to change. Enter and there we are. So I it's always recommended to use okay a cell reference. Why? Because one change into that cell reference, all our data is gonna be updated automatically. Companies use this information to make uh, very important decisions. Okay, so based into that, we could you know quickly and accurate see get a percentage. Okay, let's say that we want to find out okay what's gonna be the 25%. Type in 25, hit enter, and that will be the increase. Okay, just the increase. Now let's go ahead and change this back to 20% because the label is asking for a 20%. Okay. Now, let's see here and get the other formulas. Okay. Now right here, uh, we have average, maximum, and minimum. Okay. Now right here, let's say that we need an extra row. Okay, so we're gonna have to move this data down. Okay, the easiest way of us is once we have a selection, bring your pointer into the boundaries. When we see the four way arrow, left click, hold, and drag it down one cell. And there you go, we just move our data. Okay, now right here, the reason why we move that is because we're gonna type here, see, uh, projected. Uh, let's try a new turtle. Let's try a projected turtle. Okay? Now, what we are using, uh, we're adding this label. Because right now we are going to be adding the turtle plus 20%, and we're going to place it right here. Okay? Now, look what's got, what is happening here. Projected turtle. There's going to be occasion, like in this case, that my label is running into the next cell. Anytime that that happens, when you point it into the line, that is dividing A and B. When we have this particular icon, left click, hold it, and just drag it over. You guys are going to see this line going all the way down. So that's going to help us too. That is going to indicate when we have exactly the new column size. And then we let go. We release the left button, and there it goes. Okay, of course it's going to create a little bit of extra space here, but that's fine. As long as we have the projected total. Okay, now make sure you guys click on save. Every 5 10 minutes, click on save. Now right here, okay, we have equals. We have the total plus the new total. I'm sorry, 20% increment. And there's our total. Okay, so again, equal. Click into that total plus the 20% increment enter and then again equals plus I'm sorry I made a mistake I'm going to have to use backspace here 
plus the 20 okay equal total plus 20% increment and there we go okay so this will be the new value okay the new total row including the 20% increment okay click on save now we are gonna start using other functions the average function okay uh, this is very common to use on Excel okay um, function add or sum the sum of average can numbers maximum values minimum values okay are the most popular and common functions that we use in Excel okay now right here is asking for the average okay on the average you guys have never gonna include the total never 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 include the totals okay in this case we just want to find out okay we have one two three four five six seven eight eight different amounts for eight different countries okay now and the average of those countries is just gonna go into that particular cell d16 okay now how this is gonna work okay uh, we're gonna click into the cell where we want the average now I'm gonna be using the typing method so I'm gonna type in my function I'm gonna start with equals I'm gonna type in my function average and then I'm gonna open my parentheses when I open my parentheses is because I'm gonna be selecting the cells that I wanna use okay so in this case I wanna use I'm gonna get the average from B4 through B11 once I have my, uh, my range selected, I'm going to close my parentheses. Okay, and there's my formula. Equals average B14 through B11. When I hit enter, here, this is the average. Okay. Now, what's the average? The average is basically the span of a formula. Okay. Uh, it's just the total divided by how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. By 8 different countries. Okay, so I'm gonna do an example here. So B12 divided by A. Okay, that's 40,221 and 18. So that's the average. Okay, the average is just the grand total divided by how many cells or countries in this case we have. Okay, so there, there's the average. Okay, I mean, that's another way to, to do the average. Okay, but then again. I prefer to use a cell reference because if we move anything or we change anything I want the data to be updated automatically okay now right here you guys are gonna see that we have four decimals okay anytime that you guys see four decimals come up here into the number group under home tab number group we have the increase and decrease decimals okay now one click see the one decimal is going to be removed and it's just going to be that number is just going to be updated uh, rounded up to the next 10 another increase decrease decimal and there you go 0 0.08 okay now let's go ahead and get the other average equals average open your parentheses and then select the data that you want to use never include the totals on an average enter okay so we type in the way function now we're gonna get it in a different way here's my cell okay I'm gonna uh, bring my pointer to the arrow sum and I'm gonna click into the average okay when you guys use this method okay be very careful because look the formula is exactly the same the function equals average parentheses but Excel is selecting B14 and B15 this is very common when we go directly and use the functions. Okay. Now, anytime that we see those wavy lines, is because we could still go to go and select the data that we want to use. So in this case, it's going to be B4. Left click, hold it, hold the left button, drag it down. Okay, once we have the range, see, I'm not including the total. There it goes, D4 through D11, and then hit enter. And there's my average. Let's do one more. 
I'm going to use the arrow functions, click on average, same thing, it's going to happen, but I'm going to select the range that I want to use, and then enter, and there's my average, okay? Now, why I use a cell reference? Again, because if we change this number up here, including the projected tool on the average, is going to change. I'm sorry, not the average, but those numbers up here is going to change, okay? Uh, if we made a mistake, remember, your undo, see, it's just going to change my 25 to by 220. Okay? Now that we have this, let's go ahead and use other functions. The maximum value, minimum value. This is also, okay, very, very, very common. Okay, another function that we use a lot on Excel. Okay, so basically the max, you guys a lot of times you're just going to see max, okay? If we click into the other functions, we're going to see that, uh, that we have the function max. Back max is just going to be it's the abbreviation of maximum. And it's just referring to the maximum values. The bigger numbers, so minimum values, the smaller numbers from a range. So right here, let's say that we want to find that, okay? Which country has the maximum values? So we're going to type in the function equals max parentheses. Okay, that's going to be our function max, parenthesis, and then we select the range. And again, we don't include the totals, because if we include the total, the total is going to be the biggest number here. It's going to be the maximum value. So we are not going to have the correct information, okay? So there it is, equal max, B4 through B11, enter. Maximum value belongs to 71950.60, and that's the USA. Okay, again, equals max parenthesis. We're gonna select our data, close your parenthesis, and then hit enter. Okay, maximum value again is gonna be the USA. Okay, now let's go ahead and use the other method. We select the cell, we wanna use the arrow functions, we are gonna be applying the max. And again, see exactly the same Excel is doing, okay? So, as long as we have these wavy lines going into the data, we're going to go up here, left click into D4, hold it and drag it down, because that's going to select, we're going to be selecting the data that we want to use. We don't include the total. And then enter. Maximum value, again, the USA, 82403.56. And then let's do one more. Okay, add also, we're looking for the maximum value, select the range that you guys want to use, and hit enter. And there we have, okay, our maximum value. There you go, now, there's another, okay, function, the minimum, minimum value. And also, you guys are going to see that, see, you're saying min, M-A-M-I-N. Okay, we're going to use the same methods here, equals, main, open parenthesis, so that's my function, and we're going to be selecting the same range, and then we hit enter. Minimum value, the country that has the less sales was 14682, and that's going to be India. 14682 and 55, okay? And then again, equals M I N min of my parentheses, select the data, we close all parentheses, and we hit enter. Okay, that's my minimum value. Now let's get the next one using the functions, the arrow functions. Okay, so click into the drop down arrow, there's min, one click. And again, see, Excel now is selecting other range. So we are going to select the range that we want. Left click on D4 folder and drag it down through D11. There's your function and range. And then we hit enter. Okay, one more. That is all. We want to find out the minimum value. Arrow E4 through D11. Once we have the data selected, we hit enter, and there's my minimum value, okay? 
So 2890A belongs to India again. Make sure you just click on save. And there it was. Okay. We have our two revenue by quarter. Okay. Totals. Okay. Uh, right here I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight the sounds. Okay. Remember that we use the borders. I'm just gonna apply borders to the totals. Okay. And to this number right here. Okay. All the all the data that we apply that we use our formulas. Okay. Now right here we had more than two decimals, more than two decimals. Okay. We could format all those together at the same time. Okay. So right here we have three decimals, some of them have two decimals. Okay. Now we're gonna go up here into the decimals and we're gonna use decrease decimals. Now look into our cells and now every cell has only two decimals. Okay. Perfect. Let's go ahead and click on save. Okay. And there you go. Okay. I'm just gonna add one more item here, okay? Uh, we apply all borders to our cells. Okay. I'm gonna say this, file and say and there you go. Okay, so we use the Arison function. We type in the the functions max, mean, average. We resize the columns to display the data. We create a complex formula to get the 20% increment, and then we apply borders. Okay. Well, thank you, and until the next video tutorial. You guys have a great day, and thank you for watching. Bye bye.